How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Monitor Comics, the channel where we create comics and manga. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, then I hope you can check out some of my other videos after you're finished watching this one. We've already covered a ton of cool topics like improving the dialogue in your comics, choosing the best manga effects, and even how to select panel layouts. If any of those sound interesting to you, I'll link them down in the description below. I will also be linking some other useful videos throughout this video in the top right hand YouTube card. Keep an eye out for that. In today's video, I want to discuss two digital art softwares near and dear to my heart, Photoshop CC and Clip Studio Paint. If you're a digital artist, then I'm pretty sure you've heard of these two programs before. Both are incredibly powerful programs, but also very different. At first glance, you could say that these softwares share a lot of similarities, such as user interface and tools. The truth is, these two premium programs also share a lot of similarities with free alternative drawing programs like GIMP, Paint Tool Sci, Procreate, and Fire Alpaca. When it comes to digital art software, the interfaces are more or less the same. If you know how to use one of these programs, then it's infinitely easier for you to navigate around another one. In today's video, I'm going to be comparing Clip Studio Paint with Photoshop CC and helping you decide which is the better option for creating comics and manga. Let's get right into it. The first thing I want to take a look at is application intention. Photoshop was released to the public in February of 1990 as a raster graphics editor. Skip ahead a few decades and Photoshop is now a household name alongside its huge creative cloud family. At its core though, Photoshop is an image editing program. Photographers, graphic designers, animators, product designers, and illustrators can all make use of Photoshop's features. For the average user though, we may never use a fraction of what Photoshop has to offer. Photoshop may have drawing support, but it is not a drawing program at heart. Clip Studio Paint was released to the public under the name Manga Studio in 2001. Clip Studio Paint is listed as a page-based layered drawing program with support for bitmap and vector art, text, imported 3D models, and frame-by-frame -frame animation. This program is used for digital creation of comics, general illustration, and 2D animation. The next comparison I want to take a look at is Page Tools. Starting with Clip Studio Paint, we have an incredible amount of control over the page settings. It's very easy to set up safety margins and trim areas to make sure your art doesn't get cut off if you plan to have it professionally printed. If you are unsure what page sizes or page margins you want to use for your comics, there are plenty of templates available. For example, there's a template specifically made for Shonen Jump manga, so if you want your manga to be the size of a typical manga volume, then it's very easy to do that by selecting one of these templates. If you are using the standard version of Clip Studio Paint, then you'll only be able to work on one page at a time. This is usually fine starting out because you don't have to usually go back and reference your other pages too often. However, if you would like the option to see and manage all of your manga pages at once, the upgraded Clip Studio Paint can do just that. This feature is known as Story Files and gives you the ability to work with all of your separate files at the same time. This is personally one of my favorite aspects of Clip Studio Paint because I can visually see where page turns are going to happen and if pages work right next to each other. This feature also makes it incredibly easy to create two page spreads. To create panels, Clip Studio Paint has a dedicated tool in the toolbar area that allows you to create panel masks. Basically, by creating a rectangle panel within your safety margins, you won't be allowed to draw outside of that panel, allowing for clean borders around your pages. Right next to the Panel Masks tool is the Divide Cut Panel tool. This allows you to slice the rectangle mask you created into individual panels. You can even slice diagonally. What I like about this tool is it allows you to control the width of your automatically generated vertical and horizontal gutters. If you want your image to pop out in a panel bleed, it's very easy to draw on a layer on top of the panel mask layer. Taking a look at Photoshop, there isn't much to say really. To create a comic or manga page using Photoshop, you'll mostly be doing everything manually. You would first need to create a new document in the dimensions you want your page to be. To make sure your page doesn't get cut off, you would need to research print dimensions and create your own set of safety margins using either the line tool or the ruler tool. To create panels, you would manually need to use your rectangle tool to separate your page into panels. You will need to be extra careful though to make sure your panels are lined up with each other and your vertical and horizontal gutters are consistent. The only way to neatly make sure your drawings don't bleed outside of each panel is to fill each rectangle with a white color and create a layer mask. Currently, Photoshop does not have a way for you to manage multiple page files at once. The third comparison I want to make between these two programs is text control. Starting with Photoshop this time, you can do some pretty amazing things with text. Since Photoshop is a graphic design tool, typography is not slept on. Aside from just horizontal or vertical text, you have two great tools called the character panel and the paragraph panel. The character panel allows you to control font family, font size, vertical scale, letter tracking, baseline shift, font style, letting, horizontal scale, and kerning. With the paragraph panel, you have control over alignment and justification, left indent, first line, left indent, space before paragraph, hyphenation, right indent, and space after paragraph. While these features may sound trivial, they are what allow you to do whatever you want with text. 
Because of this, it's much easier to create logos and graphic text images using Photoshop. Photoshop's only real weakness with text is when it comes to speech bubbles. The only way to create them is to mess around with the shape tool or the ellipse tool and hope you can make consistent balloon tails. Taking a look at Clip Studio Paint now, our text options are more limited. We have standard settings like text resizing, changing font style, changing font family, and alignment. Other than that though, we don't have that much more control with text. I really hope Clip Studio Paint adds the ability to control text letting and kerning in the future because it can get annoying having to create multiple text layers just to line them up. Clip Studio Paint redeems itself with the balloon tool, which easily allows you to select and drop auto-generated speech bubbles into your page. Each bubble is fully customizable, allowing you to create the dialogue balloons you imagine. There is even a tool that allows you to create balloon tails in only a few clicks. Now, I want to take a look at the tools available in both programs that you'll most likely be using to create your comics and manga. Starting with Clip Studio Paint, the pen tool is very powerful. Aside from starting out with professional grade settings that actual manga could use, you are freely able to customize your ink pen settings and your brush settings. You also have the option to import brushes if you find one you like online. Out of every digital art program I've used, Clip Studio Paint feels the most natural when drawing. The program is so sensitive to changes in pen pressure which allows you to make crisp and sharp lines with weight variation. If this isn't for you, there's also a stabilization option to make your lines more consistent. Clip Studio Paint has a cool tool called the Pattern Brush, which allows you to easily create common background elements like flowers, grass, clouds, rocks, etc. While this may feel like a cheap shortcut, it's a great starting point to quickly get something onto your paper that you can adjust later. One of Clip Studio Paint's biggest selling points is its huge catalog of screen tone. If you read manga, then you'll know just how relevant this tool is. If you work traditionally, buying screen tone can be so expensive and it's very tedious to cut and paste onto your pages. With Clip Studio Paint, it's as simple as selecting the area you want to apply screen tone and then hitting the fill button. You can control how dark or strong you want each tone to be and can select from a wide range of effects. My personal favorites include speed lines, focus lines, shoujo effects, and beta flashes. Taking a look at the rulers, I wouldn't rely too much on the guide ruler like you would in Photoshop because with everything going on, the program has a hard time snapping to it. Instead, I always recommend you try out the symmetry ruler, perspective ruler, and special ruler. With the symmetry ruler, it's very easy to create character concept art and other unique designs like mandalas. With the perspective ruler, it's very easy to create 1, 2, and 3 point perspective grids that you can draw your backgrounds on. With the special ruler, you can easily create radial curves and parallel curves. Taking a look at Photoshop's ruler options, the guide ruler is top tier. You can easily create bound margins using this tool and figure out where the center of your page is. This is incredibly useful for organizing purposes and I'm begging Clip Studio Paint to improve this feature in the future. Aside from the guide ruler though, Photoshop doesn't have that many unique rulers like Clip Studio Paint does. If you want to create perspective lines or speed lines, you're going to have to guesstimate manually. When it comes to screen tone, there's no support for that in Photoshop. The closest alternative you have is going to be filling areas with gray color or trying to create half tone patterns. Even then though, you can't replicate the iconic manga effects we all know and love. With Photoshop brushes, you can highly custom customize them and import ones you like into the program. You can also enable pen sensitivity so you can pair this program with your drawing tablet to emulate traditional drawing. Photoshop is limited in the sense that you can't adjust your pen settings as much as you can in Clip Studio Paint. For this reason, Clip Studio ranks higher in terms of inking capabilities. Last I checked, Photoshop didn't have stabilization support either, so if you don't like pen pressure you either have to turn it off completely or turn it on completely. When it comes to painting, Photoshop can sometimes feel like stamping color down onto a page. In contrast, Clip Studio Paint has realistic paint tools and blending blurring options, which makes emulating traditional watercolor, oil paint, and copic markers a walk in the park. Now I want to discuss exporting options for print or online presentation. Both softwares have an option for you to export in a variety of different file types. However, with Photoshop, the process is much slower. To export all of your pages, you'll have to go one by one. With Clip Studio Paint, you have the option to batch export, aka export all of your pages at the same exact time. This process is a lifesaver because of how fast and organized it is. Photoshop has one redeeming feature in this category, the slice tool. When it comes to vertical webtoons, it's very easy to slice your strip up into equal sections so you can meet webtoons weird image resolution specifications. The next comparison I want to make between the two softwares is their supporting applications. Starting with Photoshop, if you pay for the Creative Cloud package, you gain access to the entire Photoshop line. This program pairs great with software like Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop Lightroom. I personally have this plan right now and only use like 3 out of the 20 plus programs that come with the pack on a regular basis. While it's nice in theory to have the entire Creative Cloud family, if your goal is to draw or just create comics, these apps will be wasting space and wasting your money. On the other hand, Clip Studio Paint comes with an add-on software called Clip Studio Assets. This program allows you to browse the online community and download brushes, textures, 3D models, etc. from other artists using the program. I personally use this software to find new screen tone effects or brushes I might like. You can also use this software for sharing your work, participating in the forum, looking at tips, publishing your manga for Kindle applications, and much much more.
One of my favorite parts about having Clip Studio Paint is that every so often you get an email inviting you to watch an exclusive webinar hosted by a guest artist. There have been many amazing artists I've been able to learn from live, including White Manga, the creator of Watchmen, and many, many more. Now let's talk about prices in US dollars. Photoshop is available as a single program for $20 a month. It's offered alongside Photoshop Lightroom for $9.99 a month. If you want all of the Creative Cloud applications, you can pay $52.99 a month. I personally don't like subscription services, but if you're a student or in college, you get a discount. I think I'm only paying like 20 bucks a month for all of the Creative Cloud applications. Once I'm done with college though, I will not be dropping 53 bucks a month on this program. In contrast, Clip Studio Paint Standard Edition can be bought for a one-time purchase of $49.99 US dollars. To get the upgraded version, Clip Studio Paint EX, you can pay a one-time purchase of $219. Don't let these prices scare you because Clip Studio Paint always goes on sale throughout the year. Both prices drop by about 50% during events like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas, Summer, Back to School, etc. So just keep your eye out. In the long term, a one-time payment is much more reasonable than having to fork money out every month. I just want to clarify, only the desktop versions of Clip Studio Paint are a one-time purchase. I'm pretty sure for the iPad version, it's a monthly subscription of $4.49 US dollars for the standard version and $8.99 for the upgraded version. You can also pay the subscription annually if you really wanted to. In conclusion, if your goal is to draw digitally or create comics and manga, definitely look into Clip Studio Paint. I would put Photoshop into the same category as free alternatives like Paint Tool Size. Procreate and Fire Alpaca because they just don't have the same comic support that Clip Studio Paint does. Don't get me wrong, Photoshop is an amazing program and I use it for some finishing touches or graphic design work, but Clip Studio Paint is just miles ahead when it comes to digital art and comic making capabilities. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please drop a comment down below telling us what software you use to create your own digital art and comics. If I missed something, I'd love to know. You can follow me on all my social media accounts using the links down in the description below. As always, keep creating guys. I'll see you all in the next one.